Okay, ladies and gentlemen, dealing with conics and the Common Core Standards, dealing with conics and the adaptation of conics, we'll get to the applications of them a little bit later. What we're going to go with is, again, our general form of any conic. You have AX squared plus BY squared plus CX plus DY plus E equals zero. If I look at the given example here, I'm going to go back and say, what shape do I have? I say, okay, well, I have two squares. So it's either circle, ellipse, or hyperbola, because both terms are squared. It's not a parabola. Then I say, okay, well, x squared has 1 for a coefficient, y squared has 2 for a coefficient. They're different, so it could be an ellipse, but I have minus. And this is the first one we have with a minus in front of one of the squared terms. That makes it definitively a hyperbola. Now, as always, we need to put it in order. So here we go. Let's complete the square. And we leave our blanks for our completion of the square. And we put any remaining term over here on the far side. Now, just like in the ellipse, we're going to have to factor out anything that's in front of the y squared before we can complete the square. Be careful when factoring out the minus. You have to do it out of all pieces. Now, the reason I have plus and plus is because these are just uh, placeholders. We won't know what that sign is until we complete the square. Now, in this case, we have, all right, half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is... 4. Put 4 there, put 4 there. Here again, we're going to have half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4, but wait a minute, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So when we put it all together, we come up with x plus 2, the quantity squared, minus 2 times y plus 2, the quantity squared, equals 8. To finish putting it in our standardized form, we need to divide both sides by 8. And so I come up with x plus 2, the quantity squared, minus. Now, 2 and 8 reduce to make 4 in the bottom. y plus 2, the quantity squared, equals 1. In the bottom, 4 is 2 squared. And here we have 2 root 2 squared, or square root of 8. That's our general form. It matches x minus h, the quantity squared, over a squared, minus y minus k, the quantity squared, over b squared, equals 1. That is a standard hyperbola form. Now, from this place, we can go ahead and move forward with actually graphing it. You'll notice in this case, I didn't give you the easy pre-done version. This is a little more complicated, but we don't apologize. We move forward. Let's graph it. My center is going to be at negative 2, comma, negative 2. My a value is going to be 2 root 2, or approximately... Two point eight. B is going to be two. Now, this is a hyperbola. If you'll remember, in an ellipse, A and B were determined by who was bigger. In this case, this one happens to be bigger, but in a hyperbola, a hyperbola first is important. First is what counts. In an ellipse, size matters. In a hyperbola, being first matters. Now, just like an ellipse, we're going to have some foci for our hyperbola. Our hyperbola, however, is going to be c squared equals a squared plus b squared a squared plus b squared. This is what's going to give it its unique shape. Rather than a circle with a singular focus and even radii, or an ellipse 
with split foci, but foci in the interior, a hyperbola is going to have an H shape. Now the H shape could be vertical as this is, or it could be horizontal. But the foci are going to be outside away from the center. In which case, we have to figure this out. So I have C squared equals 8 plus 4, which is 12. So C equals the square root of 12, or 2 square roots of 3, which is approximately... three point five now this is what we have to put all together and that's what we're gonna do when we graph it in the next section